But this virus is doing a wonderful job. They're, they're really teaching people. What? Hi, Jim. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. I'm, I'm pretty good. Well, I, I, I have to say good afternoon there, right? Um, uh, it's yes, more about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Right. It's 10 a.m. in Korea. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much for uh, joining us in this uh, very interesting, promising to be interesting event. Um, <laughs> we're having the conversation in, in the middle of a... It is very clear that uh, climate change and environmental destruction, biodiversity depletion, all these things all together has created this sort of pandemic. No one can tell you exactly climate change is the cause for COVID-19, but you know, there, there is a connection. No one can deny there is a very good connection. Um, I, I was asked that question more more than anything else in the beginning of uh, last year when when pandemic uh, broke out i uh, kind of uh, created a possible scenario well when you compare the mammalian diversity between the tropical area to temperate area bats are basically tropical mammals they, they live, most of them live in the tropics. But because of climate change, global warming, bat distribution is getting wider. They're moving into the temperate zone. Now that means physical distance between bats and humans are getting closer, right? Because most of us are living in in the temperate region anyway. There could be, you know, more chances to for a virus to move from bats to humans uh, through some other wild animals. Um, that was just a scenario I, I talked about for nearly a year. Miraculously, about two months ago, a paper came out from uh, Cambridge University. They looked at uh, the distribution change in bats in last 100 years. They pinpointed a few hot spots. One of the hot spots was southern China and northern Laos and uh, you know Myanmar in that area. In the last 100 years, 40, 40 new bats moved into from the tropics. And we know that a single bat usually carries two or three coronaviruses. So what that means is when you multiply uh, southern China, there had been uh, at least 100 new coronavirus strains came in. So there's, there's a, a very good possibility that something could happen. Um, at the beginning, you said uh, we don't know the origin, whether it was really originated from China, no one could say, but uh, until whatever the data we have indicates that uh, Southern China is a possible origin, I I'm not saying that's the origin, but so climate change clearly has something to do with this pandemic. We really need to worry about climate change more so than ever before. And when you think about it, virus would never make us go extinct because virus can, can only kill people when they infect them. Enough of us have died, then there is a naturally social distancing. Virus couldn't come from the other person to me. And that's, that's the reason why. But you know, climate change or biodiversity depletion could. It's, there's no barrier. Uh, we could we could go into a complete disaster and just disappear in a way. So I've been more or less lecturing this issue. This is really the time we really worry about now, worry about climate change and biodiversity issue. I think it works in Korea as it does in the United States is that COVID is like a baseball game compared to other sports. A uh, baseball is not a timed game. It's not all over after an hour, and uh, whoever wins within that time. It's in innings, and innings uh, depend upon how long you're successful in playing the game. So is scheduled for nine innings. Uh, something can happen to cause it to have to stop earlier, uh, which sometimes lasts a day or so. And so that we, we can't assume that we're nearing the end. It may be, this is the thing about cycles, 
We may be ending uh, a particular cycle, but that doesn't mean that there's not a new cycle about to begin or in the process of beginning. The main thing I would say to anybody is we simply don't know. It isn't over. The long-term effects, we won't know until the long term. And uh, that's one of the more most annoying and troublesome things about it. And I said, well, the cleft in time gives us an opportunity to, in fact, realize that our economic system is by no means perfect. It produces all sorts of environmental and social and individual damage. You can really get a much better economic system than the one we have now. Uh, and without destroying, without returning to a dark age or something like that, it just is uh, not just fine-tuning, it needs fundamentally to be rethought, but it could be an economy that works for everyone and not just a few, for example. And uh, certainly from an environmental point of view, because one of the things about COVID and the shutdowns is the environment is often recovered. Uh, wildlife are recovered. Places that were polluted are not polluted. Mountains that you couldn't see because of smog, you could now see. And so people were aware that a lot of the damage that the environment, that the economic system had done, either were in the process of being um, made better or could be with a, a little foresight. So I thought that was a, a, an important thing as well. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that you and Jane Goodall feel, and two pretty high-powered folks there, uh, are feel that the environment is finally beginning to get the attention uh, it deserves. We need to now really think about climate change and biodiversity issues during this um, period where I couldn't really go anywhere. Um, I had to, writing became uh, more of uh, the thing to do. So I just uh, published a book about a month ago called uh, Ecological Turn. You know uh, that we have experienced several turns in, in human history, linguistic turn or cultural turn. Now people talk about robotic turn, technological turn, or informational turn, all kinds of turns we can we can make. But having experienced this uh, incredible pandemic, I am arguing that is there any other turns as valuable or as needed as ecological turn? We need to really uh, re-establish the relationship between we the human beings and the natural environment. Um, the ecological turn is, is the only, in my opinion, now the only way we should go. I don't know whether it is, it is a doable thing, but um, some sort of educational re reform has to, be, has to be in place. Why do we have to learn always just mathematics? Or in Korea, English seems to be so important. We have we have experienced this. Why don't we learn ecology, for instance? Why don't we learn about nature and the relationship between nature and we, the human being? Isn't it something that is so important to teach? But at school, we don't teach things like that. And that's probably why we still get politicians who don't understand what we talk about, what we are concerned about, need to learn about the world, learn about the natural world that we are part of it. But my perspective is there is nothing, there is no natural world in the sense of major processes uninfluenced by human activity. We need a new science the science of the artificial that takes what is, are still processes that emerged over evolutionary time with things that humans have interfered with in order to govern evolution, in order to take care of this garden that we created out of a wonderful self-governing world. Our kids are so creative and we just yeah. don't mess with them. Uh, let them grow 
creative. That's my, my hope. Thank you very much for, for uh, a wonderful conversation today. Okay, be out. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.